combine looking cool. Steps on the way to the chipper to fix it oily. Because the yard's all cracked up, it's easy to move with the nailer. From big combines to block toilets, the toilet in the offices is blocked, or well, one of them is, so I'm going to take the grid cover up, but it's screwed down. Hmm. Not easy this to get up. Not too bad. So it's not the drain, typical, the big plum jack is at the other farm. So I'm gonna to have to go and I'll just go and get another one and then we've got one at both farms. Taking the dig around, just realise it's got a wipe on that bottom window, this one. Um cameras are brilliant as well. The chipper has got a slight oil leak and someone left the ignition on on Thursday all weekend. Now the ignition always gets left on because when you turn it off, it turns itself off and then it has to pump its ad blue back before you can turn the main ignition off, which sometimes takes a couple of minutes. Um, I can't remember who was using it last, but they walked off and left it on. So it's now, what, Tuesday, and that was Thursday, so the batteries are properly flat, so we're gonna put the jump leads across from the digger and just leave the digger on tick over charging up. And we've got the charger on the other battery because it's got two 12 volt batteries to make it a 24 volt start system with a 12 volt running system. So we'll do that, and then we've got a sofa bed to move up to Brookhouse because someone broke one. So we'll take that off while we're waiting for it to charge up. And hopefully we can get it started. Yeah, we just checked the digger's 24 volt, so we'll have to use a tractor to charge it. I've got it here now, to me, to you. This other one in here is broken, you see. Outdoor area is coming on well. Got the flags now for where the hot spots are going to be. The rest is going to be ash for turf, and then we've got the wooden gazebo thing to go up afterwards. Just on a red tractor meeting and just watching the wagons leaving the yard full of grain. You can see how badly that yard's cracked off them cameras, can't you? Just Googled myself and it's quite funny. So people, meet, the most Google question is my net worth, my wife is, I'm a married at my age, merchandise, where a farm, random. Andrew's just filtering some buckwheat to sow. He did, to where the sunflowers aren't growing. He did some yesterday, but unfortunately he's sown it on the wrong field. Point of communication. <laughs> so the barley that we sown yesterday has got a, has, has got a companion crop of buckwheat with it. So that'll be interesting to see how that works out. Andrew's just going out now with the drill to drill this buckwheat. I'm going to go and have a quick look at how it's getting on. Oh, hair there, jumping out. It's amazing how quick spring wheat grows. It's flowering already, still little white flowers on it. It's these little little bits here. They don't really look like flowers. Still not cut my nails, sorry. Um, yeah, in flower already. And obviously shot. It's, what's it been sown? Six weeks maybe. Spring barley grows even quicker. And that is what we've drilled where we cut winter barley on Monday. So that has now been watered in because it's rained overnight. There's a little bit of a mix up with the seed, so we've got buckwheat sown in with it, which is a nitrogen fixing crop. I think, I think it fixes then. But we can, um, we'll just have to see what happens, see what comes up, see how it works. And we might have to knock the, the, the buckwheat out. Luckily the seed cost us nothing because I combined it the other year. Anyway, we're in the field now that the sunflowers, the second sunflower field was drilled in. But the slugs, pigeons, crows, you name it, have completely grazed it so that is why it is still a burr field we don't like burr fields so andrew's over there now drilling some buckwheat and that grows really quick flowers as well good for the bees the beehives the behind them trees as well so hopefully that'll be pretty good this feels quite dry at the moment that we're drilling in but i can hear thunder in the background so we need to get a move on it's only 6.8 acres so realistically it should only take 20 minutes to drill with that drill loads and loads of questions of why we were drilling spring barley after the winter barley because i think people hadn't seen we'd done it last year which we did and we cut it on uh, the, i think it was something like the 20th of december or 21st of december the reason is is we can dry our grain very efficiently the solar panels on the roof power the grain dryers and the wood chip that we produce makes the heat so we can get in and cut barley more commercially beneficial if you will by going in early so we can get in before the pigeons start doing any damage yeah the moisture might be 20 plus percent but we've not got to buy gas or kerosene to dry it 
we, we're producing our own fuel. That means we can gain two weeks of, if we can. Then it also means then we can drill another crop straight away. Then hopefully harvest that in the same year. And even if that's wet, because we're cutting it in October or we're cutting it in November, we can still dry that for basically a nil cost. So we're just trying to get two crops a year making use of what we've got around us, which is biomass and solar. Now, we've done it for sort of three years now, tried to sum what we call summer barley, which is drilling it after the winter barley. But we've never been able to get it in this early. So it'll be an experiment. We'll see when it matures. Could be October, could be the end of September. We don't know. But sowing it in June's got to be better than sowing it July like it was last year. Just felt a spot of rain and I'm miles from my car. And I've got no hoodie quickly show you these beans as well before I get completely rained on not as tall as I'd like I like them tall the more taller they are the more pods they've got it's probably because it has been so dry getting rain now still some flowers on the top so hopefully they've not completely given up growing for the year and don't think summer's here and we'll keep rising and we'll keep getting more pods but podding well at the bottom plenty of ladybirds as well and no disease no chocolate spot or anything in them which is a disease there's the rain so I just left the window down on my car and the door open while I was setting Andrew off with the drill. I told you I heard thunder. Sunflower update, they're getting watered. I'm just at Brookhouse now, we just had a massive downpour. It's actually flooded there as well. Never seen it flood there before. Tony is putting up the, I don't know what you call it, the thing over the hot tub made of wood. But um, I don't really want to venture across there because it's got quite wet. But they shell in the van and they're on with it again. Yeah, they look dry. Got a few posts up. Come and see the progress again tomorrow. I'll get back to the yard. We've got uh, still some cleaning to do around the dryer, which we have been doing a bit of today. Just come to look at some wheat because it's got these iron rats in it. So, there we go. They're just everywhere at the moment. I actually think I need to set up a WhatsApp group, add the people that want to go shooting in it, and then just drop pins of all the fields when we see them, and then let everyone have the conversation amongst themselves about who can do what fields on what days, because these pigeons are doing my head in, and then loads of people are texting me all the time, can we come pigeon shooting? And you can't direct them or organise them, because they're coming from all over on all different days, and I don't have the time, so I thought maybe that would work. Does anyone, what do other people do about pigeon shooters and arranging them and getting them into the right place? Because like someone might see them on one field and say, well, I can come next Sunday. But really someone might be able to come on the Saturday before or the Monday before or whatever. Don't just suggestions. Years ago, you had a gamekeeper, can't afford one. Don't own all the land we farm either. So we don't have full permission on everything that we farm to shoot either, which is a little bit annoying. So then that's where we use gas guns and banger ropes. On the steps, we've got an oil leak in here. I'm gonna work out what is going on, whether it's the motor or the hydraulic fitting on the top. Can you see that steaming? It stopped raining and this water's evaporating off the hay cap. Just in the office with Ian. So yesterday's policeman appeal thing that we were doing, we wanted to hit 1,500 quid, 3,650 quid. But to, you can add nearly 700 pound a gift aid to it. So what's that? That's 4,200. So we've absolutely smashed it. So thank you everyone for your support. Also, Ian's going to take a picture of me wearing this because we didn't, we suddenly realized we've got a box full of the different color polos. So he's going to put them online in a bit. Maybe not today, but there's a flyer flying around it. But maybe tomorrow. And also there's some t-shirts still left as well. And there's another batch on the way. Just sending a picture of the reversing camera for filling the trailers on the combine because Tom Reese wants to put one on this. Some of you might remember this from last year when we had to sort this gearbox out inside there. Anyway, it's bubbling oil out of the breather, which means that the seal has gone in the hydraulic motor and it's leaking oil internally into that gearbox that is then bubbling out of that gearbox, out the breather. So we're gonna have to take this motor off and then reseal it, which is not what we wanted to do on a Wednesday. Office is a great bit of diversification until the toilet's blocked in the morning and the alarm goes off in the afternoon. Let's go and see what's wrong. This video is sponsored by Haycaps. <laughs> Only joking. Yeah, that seal has twisted. 
but why that sits on there it's obviously had pressure and it's forced that seal out so we need to work out what's going on Rob's realised the case drain which is this pipe here when it would damage the pipe of the day it kinked it and it stopped it and restricted it which then caused pressure which then blew that seal so we're hoping that if we just either take that seal out see what it looks like and put it back in or put a new one in you are. and now we've got a new pipe on the case drain it should be all right yeah so mystery solved problem is we've run out of double chip so we've got to get it up and running tomorrow hopefully we'll have a seal on the shelf if not we'll have to put the old one back in but that's not best practice because if it starts to leak because it's had a kink in it, it it's a pain and it's a bit of a big strip down to get at it well not a big strip down but an awkward strip down it's not easy taking that motor in and out of the hole that it sits in don't worry you can see the water dripping off the drill but andrew got rained off so hopefully if it's dry tomorrow we can finish the rest of the field but um it did put quite a bit of rain down what is really weird is the birthday bumper is huge today whereas yesterday it was dead small there was only one person on it it's just weird how like they go in waves anyway here it is too many to read out but what i will say is jim lives in michigan so if your name is on there happy birthday if your name is not on there and it's your birthday happy birthday here we went from one yesterday to 11 today anyway that is about it for today thank you everyone that's watching don't forget if you're um, a new subscriber tell me where you're watching from and tell me how you found the channel that'd be interesting as well so see you all tomorrow and hopefully it's a bit of a drier day actually one last thing i've been asked to talk an event in banbury next week anyone got any contacts at prodrive because i'd love to have a look around if you have let me know